Hello and welcome to or welcome back to my channel where I am documenting my husband and I's journey to become debt free and achieve financial independence and we're aiming to do this in 2021. Today I'm going to be quickly going over our net worth as of the end of May and heading into June. And if you are not familiar with what your net worth is, it's a simple calculation. You add up all of your assets, so anything that you own, you subtract from it any liabilities, so anything that you owe on. And the difference between those two is your net worth. And this can be a number that ranges from negative to positive. In fact, a lot of people start off in the negative, especially if you have a large amount of debt. And that could be credit card debt, consumer debt. It could be your home mortgage, a car loan, or as many, many people are familiar with, student loan debt falls in that category as well. As for your assets, there's a range of things that you can include in there, and there's heaps of information out on the interwebs for you to learn about that. So in May, we can see our home value. We base this off of what our last appraisal was, so we don't use any online calculators or comparisons to homes around us, so our home value is still sitting at $470,000 cash on hand in savings. And this is only money that is in our savings accounts or our $1,000 project, which is money that is going to be going towards investing. I do not include our regular checking account or our revolving accounts just because those fluctuate so much. I like to have the most conservative estimate as possible. So our cash on hand in savings is $7,100. The combined amounts in our retirement accounts, and this is for my husband and myself, and this is just our Australian retirement accounts. We do have our U.S. investments, but that just gets way too messy to get into. $327,684. We are slowly fading out having our vehicles as part of our calculation. So I'm actually just decreasing this by about $3,000 each month, just because I don't want to take the big massive hit of um, $52,000 all at once. So I've dropped that down to $52,000 and other, this is another asset that I have with an appraised value of $25,300. And so that gives us a total in assets of 882,084. We only had a monthly change of $19. Again, that is because we are phasing out that vehicle amount. And for us, um, the markets weren't overly great in May, so we're looking to hopefully get a bounce back in June. But we did have so pretty much a 0% change on the month, but an overall increase year to date on our assets of an increase of 2.24%. For our liabilities, we only have two liabilities now. One is our mortgage. So happy with this one. It's Still, it's a lot at $399,638, makes up 92% of what we owe, but it is now under $400,000. And so for us, that's a little mini milestone and we are happy to have that. Our next milestone will be getting it under $390,000. We are down to $13,351 on our loan. So that is making up um, zero or 7%. Our credit card is at zero. I don't know why it's at 2%. It just means that I have a problem in my calculation somewhere and I'll have to go back and find that. But so for liabilities, we have $412,989. We have decreased our liabilities by $4,201. This month, year to date, we have decreased our total liabilities this does include the mortgage, so it's not just our consumer debt, of $22,445. Gives us a monthly change of a decrease of 1% and 5% overall. And the reason why this number is going to be smaller as compared to just our consumer debt progress is because when you have a mortgage that large, it does impact and skew what those percentages, but that is the reality of where we are at. So if we subtract, that um, those assets from our liabilities, we do get our total net worth. And so our net worth is now $469,095. So even with that decrease in the value of our vehicles as we phase it out, we did still have a monthly net worth change of $4,220, a year to date net worth change of 51,767, really large amount, 
but also really driven by paying off our debts. We had a monthly net worth change of just under 1% and we have changed our total net worth for the year. We have increased it by 12.4%. have um, both my table and then also my graph. So this just gives me an overview snapshot. It is a repeat of everything that was presented before. So we can see for May, that we did have um, in assets 882,044. We can see what our liabilities were. And then again, that net worth of 469,000 plus. And then you can see our trend line here that is going up. So as usual, assets are in blue, liabilities are in peach, and our net worth is this gray area. I have added as well um, labels with the values in. So it's just the same information, another way of seeing a snapshot. Some people like pie charts, some people like graphs, some people like tables, some people like scatter plots. Um, as long as you just don't use like an exploding pie graph, pretty much all is good in terms of a visualization that you can look at really quickly. And even though that trend line might look as if it's, uh, you know, small, it's still, you know, it's over a $50,000 increase so far in our net worth while we're um, actually taking some of our assets out. So all in all, really pleased with the progress that we are making. Okay, so that is everything that I have for our net worth calculation for May heading into June. I do this every month. Um, prior, I had always been looking at it maybe um, uh, twice a year or maybe every quarter. Looking at it monthly because there's so many fluctuations that it's sometimes it is a bit more frustrating. I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with doing it month by month. I said I try it out for a year. So I am sticking to that and then I'll reevaluate it once I get to the end of 2021. So hopefully you are doing well with your net worth if you are tracking it. If you are not tracking it, why not? Um, it's something good to look at, even if you don't particularly like the numbers. Sometimes you might actually be surprised by what the numbers tell you as well. And I'm also really curious, what do you include or not include in your assets? So do you go for your most conservative approach or do you put everything everything in there and why? Really curious to know. You can drop this down in the comment box. I always look forward to reading those comments that you guys have and engaging with you. As always, do please remember to choose kindness, show gratitude, always keep a positive mindset, and I will see you in the next video.